Magandang uh, umaga, magandang hapon, magandang gabi, ano man po oras sa inyong mga time zone at uh, mga bansang kinaroroonan, mga kababayan nating Pilipino. Ito po ang Media Health Forum. Muli, sumasay so, papawid sa ngalan po naman ng Bauer Tech Corporations. Kami po ay naririto upang muling magbigay sa inyo ng talakayang naugnay sa ilang mga maiinit na issue. Ako po si Edwin Eusebio, kasama po ang co-host natin na si Lakay Rolly Gonzalo para tayo po na may mamagitan dito sa ating mga panahon sa ating po namang talakay ngayong araw ng Independence Day. Pero kahit man po Independence Day, tuloy-tuloy ho tayo sa ating advocacy na maisulong at maibigay ang mga palitang may kaugnayan po sa ating talakayang pangkalusugan. Ngayong araw ay papaksa pa rin tayo dun sa isa sa mga pinakakontrobersyal na pinag-uusapan simula ho ng kasabay ng ating Media Health Forum. Ito po ay kaugnayan ng isinusulong natin na pagsasaligal ng uh, paggamit ng cannabis And as usual, kasakasama natin ang ating mga advocates na nagsusulong ng kanika nilang po namang mga pananaw sa puntong ito. At uh, without further ado, ay papakilala na natin with the permission of uh, my partner, Lakay Rolly Gonzalo, yung ating po namang mga guests for today. At yan po ay uh, pinangungunahan ng hindi na bago, <laughs> hindi naman luma, pero lagi nating nakakasama. Siya po ay isang uh, program specialist. From the City of Sacramento's Office of Cannabis Management, specializes in policy development and licensing regulations mula pa ho ng 2017. And 20 years of experience in the state of California and local government experience in areas of public policy. At uh, naging public information officer for a local municipality. At dati hong editor-in-chief uh, for a Filipino-American newspaper in Los Angeles, California. Sa ating mga kaibigan, si Ma'am Sarah Uitingban Cruz. Ma'am Sarah, welcome to the program. And of course, kasama din po natin, uh, Sir Edison Edison King. Siya po yung industrial hemp champion. He is advocating industrial hemp for eco-sustainability. He is also the co-founder of Sensible Philippines. Sensible Philippines is a registered non-profit advocacy and education. Organization focus on reform, advocating the sensible use of cannabis. And of course, ang atin po namang brain man sa atin po namang forum na ito ang nagpasimula ng advocacy na matulungan ang ating mga kababayan na mga may problema sa kalusugan. Tinawag na po siya at may bansag na siyang kaibigan sa kalusugan, ang general manager po ng Bauer Tech Corporation and other than our boss, Richard Nixon Gomez. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat, sa lahat ng mga nanonood, sa lahat ng ating mga ta tagapakinig sa ating Media Health Forum. Layunin po natin magbigay ng tamang impormasyon sa mas marami nating mga kababayan. Advance information lang po. Uh, this week, darating ang Indian Ayush Ministry or Ministry of Health ng India. Uh, isa lang sa buong Pilipinas ang uh, pharmaceutical company na kanilang papasyalan. Yan ang PowerTech Corporation. At isa lang din ang uh, Natural Path Center na kanilang papasyalan. Yan din ang kaibigan sa kalusugan. Pagkatapos doon ay pupunta na po sila sa Department of Health. Yan ay mangyayari ngayong Wednesday, June 14. Thank you, sir. At yung ating mga kasama po naman sa larangan ng broadcast, bagamat ang iba ay wala dito dahil nga po sa pagbabago uh, ng mukha ng broadcasting, marami tayong mga kasama ngayon ang nanonood via online sa ating Facebook Live, sa ating YouTube Live na ngayon ay naka-online. At yung kanila mga katanungan, probably ay idadaan na rin nila dun sa kanila mga text. Ito man, kasama din natin ang uh, namumuno sa social media ng Pilipinas, si uh, ka Kaka. <laughs> uh, Kasakasama natin. Lakay, yeah. welcome muna ang ating mga panauhin din. Uh, gum gumamit ka ng mic, Lakay, at naka-on-air tayo. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Welcome. Magandang tanghali. Magandang hapon. Magandang gabi sa lahat ng ating mga suki sa Health Forum. Ang tanong eh, hindi pa kayo, hindi pa kayo napagod? Lea and uh, Edison, hindi pa kayo napagod? Okay pa. Nakakape no, naman eh. <laughs> may, may kape naman eh. Naman naman. Lea. A statement. Hindi pa kayo napagod? 
Ah, hindi pa naman pa. <laughs> maaga pa, maaga pa. <laughs> ano ba, kisimula pa lang tayo, gusto mo lang pagurin. <laughs> Wala kaming hangover. <laughs> anyway, yung pong uh, bahagi na yan ay uh, pagpapasigla lamang sa ating program. So, simulan na natin ang ating uh, proper discussions. Nain natin si Ma'am Sarah, sapagkat uh, itong bagay na ito ay matagal na rin niyang uh, sabi nga natin ay ipinaglalaban at the same time. Ma'am, ano ba ang kalakaran ngayon itong huling paghanap niyo dati sa Senate? At the same time, ano bang sa pakiramdam mo ang uh, pananaw ngayon ng ating mga legislators na kung saan ina-address natin itong ating advocacy? Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, maligayang araw ng kalayaan. Um, Marunong na siya mag-Tagalog. Piratis ka yun. So, um, anyway, yeah, so... Um, it was, you know, parang six months ago, yung, uh, when I was uh, called to be a resource person sa Senado for uh, Senator Padilla's bill. So I was actually hoping to start na yung technical working group, but I guess, you know, we'll have to wait a few more months or I don't know. But um, uh, the status... Um, I think ang most fresh bill na nandun ngayon is on decriminalization, which was the bill um, proposed by uh, Congressman Alvarez. And um, your question on ano ang potential pananaw dito ng mga fellow um, um, legislators, I think, um, you know, Uh, same as you know, the last time I was here, we have to keep talking about it. Para ma, ma, ma slowly ma shift natin yung public opinion. Uh, there's still a stigma on on cannabis, and it's not only sa public. Don din sa mga legislators. So, um, for a congressman supporting a cannabis-related bill, especially decriminalization, this is a big lift. Malaking effort to, kasi paano nila explain sa mga you know, constituents nila na, you know, I'm supporting a bill na potentially papalayain natin lahat ng mga drug addicts na nakakulong. Siyempre, hindi pa, hindi pa um, warmed up or hindi pa tanggap yun ng, ng society natin. So, dahan-dahan lang. And I guess, itong, itong forum na to is a big help in, you know, keeping the conversation alive. And uh, naniniwala ako bilang dating periodista dito sa power natin as media na tuloy-tuloy lang nating pag-usapan to. Keep it in the news. And eventually, um, you know, the more we talk about it, the less and less taboo the subject becomes. And um, dahan-dahan magbabago yung opinion ng mga tao tungkol dito. Kung ano talaga yung cannabis. That it's a plant. It's not, you know, drugs that the way they portray it. So. Right, thank you ma'am. So, unti-unti ay uh, maliliwanagan din ho mga nalalabuan. So, ang isang nating kasama din ay uh, nauugnay din po sa industriya ito. Pero kanina nga, admittedly, nilapitan ko si Boss Richard. Tinanong ko, Boss, ano ba yung hemp? Ano ba yung industrial hemp? Kasi sabi ko, hindi ako pamilyar. So, uh, sino sir ang dapat magbigay mo na ng kapaliwanagan? Si Sir Edison King ay isa ho sa in involved dito at uh, siya ang tinatawag na industrial hemp champion advocating the industrial hemp. Ma Sir, could you kindly give us kung ano yung pangkalahatang dapat na maging pananaw dito sa area po ninyo ng expertise ninyo? Hello, testing. What is industrial hemp at the same time? Opo. Uh, would you like the short story or the long version na uh, kompleto na? Simulan na natin to. Simulan na natin yung ano, uh, why we're here. All right, Sige po, sige po. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I want to express uh, gratitude ko for the opportunity to uh, speak about uh, industrial hemp. And uh, I'm thankful for the opportunity, uh, sir, and then for the Media Health Forum. Uh, okay, so my topic is about industrial hemp, and it's, uh, uh, I'm going to talk about it. It's hemp Heals Humanity, the mind-altering story of industrial cannabis. But as uh, was mentioned earlier, uh, hemp, it's just a plant. Uh, and cannabis is just a plant. And uh, the medicine part of it that uh, we're really needing to be taken care of, talagang tinutukan natin sa Senado, sa Congress, that is uh, uh, an important thing. 
However, the medicine is uh, just scratching the surface. There's so much more. There's uh, more than medicine when it comes to the plant of cannabis. <clears throat> now, uh, I would just want to share a brief story about myself. Uh, uh, my Edison Ching. Uh, like like si Mam Zara, I grew up in uh, California, in Los Angeles. And however, we moved to the Philippines here to, to start a new life uh, in my teens. Uh, when, I arrived, when I arrived here in Manila, uh, I knew very little about the city. I had to discover what it meant to truly belong here. And so, nagtanong ako sa mga friends ko and family na paano ba natin uh, malaman, matuto talaga uh, about how the Philippine, uh, Filipino people uh, in yung culture nila. And I discovered that uh, majority here in the Philippines, it's about basketball and religion. Kung alam niyo talaga to, uh, uh, you have a pretty good idea of what uh, the Filipinos really, uh, really matter in their hearts. Uh, and I know it's funny, but uh, there's a lot of truth in this. Now, time passed, of course, and I embarked on a journey to continue to learn more about the Filipino people. And it was when I visited the, the Coconut Palace in Pasay, the, the former uh, office of the vice president, that really mesmerized uh, my young mind. <clears throat> the Coconut Palace, it has an amazing claim. Every piece of the house, uh, where from chairs to tables to the walls to the roofs, Latian my my coconut. It was a project that showcased the skillful use of coconuts by the Filipino people. With care, creativity, and craftsmanship, pinakita ng Filipino that we can accomplish remarkable things with the gifts that uh, binigay ng Diyos sa atin. Yung kaya, halaman lang yan. Coconuts, uh, also referred to as the tree of life, uh, possesses countless uh, uses. Uh, niisip ko lang yung moments na, di ba, nagilinis tayo ng uh, saig natin, gumagamit tayong bunot, and umiinom tayo ng coconuts, and nakita ko rin yan yung coconut na biodiesel. Coconut biodiesel, uh, that's oil derived from plants. Yun yung nag, uh, sa mga gas natin, sa kotse, and stuff like that. And that really intrigued my eco-conscious mind. The idea of a plant that produces oil uh, seems almost divine. Uh, now, this is where the yung scientific story begins. Growing up, up, growing up, I understood that gas for oil in cars uh, were sourced from deep underground with fossil fuels. The concept of growing oil from plants seemed fantastic, and I wanted to learn more. I, so I explored different plants, and while many produced oil, uh, the most valuable plant, or MVP, was industrial hemp. Now, the industrial hemp, yeah. Now, similar to coconuts, industrial hemp uh, offers numerous possibilities. It's robust and versatile, a true champion. And just like coconuts, industrial hemp thrives here in, in the Philippines, in the Philippine climate, making it a perfect match. However... Uh, unlike coconuts, industrial hemp, which is a class of cannabis, remains illegal here in the Philippines. Uh, quick background on the history of industrial hemp. My study uh, revealed so much. It's been one of the most wildly cultivated crops throughout history. Uh, the medicine is just scratching the surface of what we know. Uh, cannabis has a name in every language. From ancient pyramids, even all the way back to biblical times, uh, civilizations have already been using industrial hemp for, for their lives. When you have hemp, you have food, clothing, and even shelter. It played a crucial role in business from Europe to China, and history has shown that it's been used uh, throughout. So, however, in medio modern times through the Industrial Revolution, uh, the arrival of cheaper alternatives uh, dealt a blow to hemp's dominance. Hemp fibers were replaced by softer cotton, and uh, hemp paper, uh, like this, were replaced by paper from trees. Hemp paper. 
The, and, and then hemp rope, uh, they were replaced by synthetic ropes like nylon, which is stronger. New technologies emerged replacing hemp. Then came uh, the devastating blow when uh, recreational use and the perception of cannabis as a social ill. So the miracle plant became the forbidden one. Uh, oops. Ah. Uh, yeah, nevertheless, thanks to a group that uh, advocates for medicinal use and uh, people in uh, politics, the world again is turning uh, their attention to industrial hemp. And in the Philippines, uh, a group like the Medical Cannabis, uh, the Medical Cannabis Party, they're spearheading the efforts. So I want to take this moment Muna, to, to acknowledge and thank uh, the hardworking uh, organizations that are really making the, the big effort uh, in, in the political scene, like say Mamzara, plus uh, the other the politicians in, in Congress and in the Senate uh, for, for doing what we can to change the laws in the Philippines. Uh, we acknowledge the, the Philippine Society of uh, the Doctors, the kind of hopeful, sensible Philippines, and 420 Philippines for their efforts and, and their amazing work in, in helping out in spreading the word and keeping the conversation going. Now, outside our country, uh, scientists are uncovering new frontiers beyond, okay, beyond our current knowledge. For eco activists uh, like myself, uh, hold uh, hemp holds tremendous potential in cleaning up various industries. A significant uh, a significant uh, sector is in construction. Uh, currently, it's, uh, through construction, it accounts for a big part of uh, yung mga, what they call carbon emissions. So, if if you're aware of uh, the climate challenges that we have these days. We really have to look for more sustainable uh, materials. Masyado na marami yung concrete na ginagamit natin. Masyado na tayo malakas magpulut. And uh, things need to change uh, because we're going through something. The world is changing and we need to really uh, change what we do. We can't do what we used to be, what we've been doing uh, before. Another significant uh, sector... <coughs> So yung, what they're doing is they've actually made uh, houses uh, from hemp. Hempcrete is what they call it, is a concrete uh, substitute. It's natural, non-toxic, and breathable that serves as a very good uh, substitute. It's eco-friendly and has reproved eco-approvals from many scientists all over the world. It's, and also, it's remarkable to witness buildings uh, constructed primarily from hempcrete, from a single plant. So a lot like what, what we have with the Coconut Palace here, they're already doing in other countries. They're building homes with uh, industrial hemp and cannabis. Uh, another uh, eco-challenge uh, these days is deforestation. What we, know, what we knew then... Uh, paper from trees is better than hemp, uh, no longer rings true. Too much de deforestation uh, needs to slow down in order to prevent the climate disaster. Going back to hemp production per, uh, can be a big help. Hemp grows rapidly and har can be harvested quickly. And new technologies have made the outputs very similar. So this kind of paper, Mejo, this is the old technology, but the new paper from hemp, it looks exactly the same as the regular paper na, na nabibili natin na, na, in anywhere else. The same thing with uh, hemp fabrics today. Uh, like this shirt, as this actually, this, is, this shirt is made of hemp. Yeah, this is made of hemp fibers. So, mas maganda na siya. Ito. Nakakalusot naman sa airport, hindi ka sinisinghot ng aso. So <laughs> far, <naman>. so good. <laughs> so far, so good. <laughs> So while cotton's advantage a hundred years ago uh, were that it was softer, we, uh, we now know that there are long-term uh, consequences. Cotton, yes, it was softer, but cotton per yard uses 100 times more water and 100 times uh, more toxic pesticides than hemp. And unlike, uh, and unlike cannabis, 
it actually leaves the soil barren after use. So talagang, for the lack of a better term, nalalaspag in lupa sa mga cotton plants. Unlike hemp, it actually improves the soil quality, uh, making it a, a heck of a lot more sustainable. The scientific community is actively researching uh, ways to enhance the, the softness of uh, the hemp fibers. And then, so, now going back to the topic sa uh, hemp oil, it, uh, sa, uh, plant-derived oil, there's hemp oil, and it continues uh, its remarkable, remarkable growth. The plant-derived oil, in, and, and dami, dami pwede gawin, now they're actually making plastics out of it as well. Uh, now, across the globe, countries are conducting a lot of research on industrial cannabis, driven by the urgency to combat the, uh, the impending climate crisis. The United States, European Union, Canada, and Thailand, and other nations are actively exploring uh, how to harness industrial hemp's benefits. While no plant is perfect, hemp stands out as a gift from a higher power to scientists a valuable contributor, and the MVP in the fight against climate change. Now, sadly, in the Philippines, every single aspect of, cannab of the cannabis plant remains illegal. So no research has been done. In other countries, uh, hemp is allowed for cultivation and use and research. But the way the Philippine laws is... Uh, Sigurista tayo, so talagang lahat ng cannabis, including industrial hemp, uh, remains illegal. Uh, but that doesn't mean hindi tayo nagtry. A few years ago, uh, uh, myself with a group of uh, scientists from the Department of Science and Technology and the uh, UP College of Engineering, we, we presented a research to the Dangerous Drugs Board to conduct uh, research on batteries, batteries derived from uh, material made of cannabis. And unfortunately, uh, permission was denied because of all, because it still remains illegal. And of course, the, the professors, I mean, must have for them, as long as we get the, the permit and clearance, go sila. Since we didn't get it, okay, that's I oh, know. Uh, better luck next time, and we're hope, uh, hoping that that next time will come sooner rather than later. Can I that, can I butt in? Apa. Maganda masyado yung sinasabi mo dyan about uh, batteries derived from hemp and apa. so on, and clothing and so on. Um, and you also mentioned the Department of Science and Technology. Apa. On the third week of November, magkakaroon ng uh, National Inventors Week. Mm. And that will be a good uh, opportunity. Uh, I will uh, do my best to make sure that there is a isang booth don. Kung meron tayong mga display materials from him, uh, so that we can showcase it to the scientific community. Mm -hmm. Gabi uh, natin, ha? Wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> right. Anyway, yun ang uh, paliwanag patungkol sa industrial hemp. Pero nakakaroon ng quite confusions, uh, Boss Richard, dito sa cannabis and hemp. Ano ba ang might masasabi natin na distinctions na pinagkaiba ng dalawa? Tulad, tulad ng hemp na napakaraming produktong nagagawa, yung marijuana ba ay meron din ganun? Uh, mga pro, uh, pro products from cannabis? Uh, the short answer is uh, yes. Bale, the way that the, yung distinction nila is in scientific way is the content of THC. Uh, th it's actually different for many countries. In the United States, it, hemp, uh, cannabis is considered hemp if it's 0.3% or less of THC. In Colombia, it's 1% or less the THC of THC. And in the European Union, Union it's 0.2%. Uh, so the way it's classified, medyo iba-iba, kanya-kanyang classification. But to top it all, magkamag-anak sila. Yes, yes. Magpinsan sila. Oh, Sarah, tama. Magpinsan sila. Magpinsan sila. May anything, ma'am? Yung maliit na distinction na yun, that spelled the difference in the U.S. kung bakit legal ang hemp and cannabis is not. 
uh, kasi yung 0.3% uh, dahil ganun kababa yung THC niya, it was classified as um, as an, an industrial plant uh, and the legalized siya under the Farm Bill of 2018. Um, whereas yung cannabis hanggang ngayon, we're still struggling to make it, to reschedule it sa, sa US um, drug substance um, scheduling. So, yeah, that's the difference. Okay, just to give a uh, uh, no, yung perspective, no? 0.3%. Kung tutusin, mali yan. Pero sa ginagawa ng Bauer Tech ngayon, may mga halaman, nag-extraction tayo. Long pepper, ceiling haba. Kinukuha ko doon ng piperin. That is only 0.1%. Pinagchatsagaan ko ma-extract yung 0.1% to get piperin and use it as part of a... Uh, of the products that we manufacture in Bauer Tech. But there's another one, curcumin. The, the content of curcumin is turmeric is 0.2% up to 0.5%. Pinagchachagaan kung hanapin yon, kunin yon para mabuo ang pie cure. Now, when, when we're talking about 0.3% or less, sabi nyo, ay napakaliit naman, baliwala yan. Actually, sa pharmaceutical side, kayang kunin yon at kayang gawing gamot yun. Yun nga lang, uh, technical uh, description is, pag 0.3 or lower, hemp na siya. Kumbaga, uh, sa common na tao, wala na siya masyadong value, di ba? On the street. And also, just one more point, no? Yung, yung THC is the psychoactive ingredient of the cannabis plant. Yung CBD, that's the medicinal aspect. So yun yung, when we hear, when lagi natin naririnig yung CBD and THC, CBD is the medical um, ingredient, and then THC is the psychoactive ingredient. Yung THC, ito yung maging happy-happy ka. Yung CBD, uh, gagaling ka sa maraming karamdaman. Although yung THC, meron din siyang med, uh, medical value. Meron din. Pero yung THC ang nagpapahigh, nagbibigay ng high effect. Edison, kasama ba kayo sa grupo ng nag-advocate ng ang uh, marihuana ay gawing uh, gamot? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Opo. Opo, yes, sir. Uh, and uh, yung also another distinction then when it comes to yung sa gamot, yung sa marihuana, uh, again, ano, halaman lang siya. So, yung the medicine part of it, yan yung bulaklak. Yan yung parang prutas. Doon nang gagaling yung gamot talaga. When it comes to sa industrial hemp, parang yung the, yung nasabi ko about the coconut, it's ginagamit yung stems, yung leaves, uh, napapakinabangan din naman yun in a way that can be used in an industrial way. So yung mga medicinal sa, sa uh, flower or sa yung fruit of the tree ang ginagamit but the rest pwede pang pakinabangan yun po yung talagang ginagamit for industrial use parang technically pwede tayo mag-grow ah, limbawa lang ah kasi yung illegal pa pati hemp sa Philippines di ba kung ang inapprove lang sa atin hemp hindi cannabis so industrial ang direction niya pero technically speaking kaya pa rin natin gawing gamot yung natitira doon mula sa buds. Very low psychoactive content and yet may medical use siya. And since wala na siyang THC, baka hindi nakakailanganin ng S2 prescription or yellow prescription. Uh, sa madalit sabi, uh, mga sir, mga ma'am, yung, yung medical hemp ay pwedeng gaya ng sinasabi ng ating guest from fruits to top ay magagamit natin Ito bang marijuana at the same time ay pwedeng magkaganon, Boss Richard, na mapakinabangan din natin all a part ng marijuana from the, the stem? What is cannabis? Oh, cannabis. Well, actually, it's it's the same thing. I mean, uh, we have to, and yung atras muna tayo kasi yung sa terminology po ng marijuana. Uh, marijuana po is, is just a nickname. It, there's no real scientific uh, use of it. Uh, marijuana is cannabis. So, yung, it's, it's an inter interesting story too. I heard, uh, may narinig din ako before, the word marijuana was uh, no, uh, derived when there was a story there na parang people were asking, is the states to? Parang 
the mga leaders nagtatanong nga sila ano ba yung so what does it feel how does it feel like when you use this so, nag uh, nagsuspok sila and marami mga Pilipino ang sagot nila doon is mahiwaga 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 and then the yeah, the Americans okay marijuana <laughs> then <laughs> and then they they went off from there but in a technical sense cannabis is marijuana and it's just iba lang yung parang nickname lang niya in nangyari mm -mm. Yeah. Nagkaroon tayo ng background ng marihuana sa stage. <laughs> so sounds like lang pala yun. Sounds like, gano, oh, yung sagot eh, mahiwaga, uh, mahiwaga. Okay, okay. that works. <laughs> uh, just to clarify, lahat ng nakukuha sa industrial hemp, pwede ba siyang kunin sa industrial cannabis? Uh, lahat? Yes, kasi it's, especially for industrial cannabis, it's the stems, in yung leaves, yung roots, yung seeds doon po nanggagaling yung for industrial use. Yes, kaya na. Doon is speaking of uh, capability ng uh, pag-extract ng nasabing cannabis. Boss Richard, papasok dito ang papel ng Bauer Tech Corporation, the Filipino-owned company of yours. Capable ba na? Kaya na ba? Kung extract na pag-uusapan, mas economical, mas uh, malaki ang yield kung sa cannabis tayo kukuha. Iniisip ko lang din eh. Just looking na na, what if hemp ang ma-approve sa Philippines? Kakayanin din natin yan eh. Because of process of extraction eh. 0.1% chinatsyaga ko nga eh. Yan pa kayang 0.3% kakayanin natin yan. And by the way, just to share, two weeks ago, I was invited as a speaker sa International Conference on Climate Change Adaptation and Disaster Risk Reduction Management. And my topic was the use of high-value crops for agricultural adaptation. And I mentioned two. One is turmeric. The second one is cannabis. I mentioned also the high sequestration, carbon sequestration capability of cannabis. Hindi ko nasamahin, pero basically almost the same thing. Yan eh. That uh, inirang ko sila in terms of carbon sequestration, bamboo is very good. Mango is very good, may economical value pa. Pero ang cannabis is in between pa, higher than mango and lower than, uh, than uh, bamboo. Kaya bukod doon sa mga napag-usapan natin, ang medical, industrial nga, nabanggit din niya kanina, is about climate change. Yes, that was my topic. The use of high-value crops for agricultural adaptation in climate change. Yung cannabis ay may sasabi natin na kaya niya mag-adapt sa anumang uri ng weather. Uh, si Ma'am, naging familiar doon sa mga plantations ng cannabis at doon sa kanilang lugar. Kasi eh, dito nga sa atin tinatawag lang damo, di ba? Uh, madali ba talagang tumutubo yan o nakapag-a-adapt sa land na kung saan siya nakikita? Yes, um, historically, tumutubo siya kahit saan. But, um, you know, in ngayon in this environment um, and in California um, majority no I'm not gonna say majority yung uh, in the urban cities um, cannabis is grown in warehouses and indoor uh, mas madali mas na manipulate mo yung day and light I mean day yeah daytime and nighttime and uh, it's very scientific na ngayon yung growing but uh, even in uh, environments where, you know, yung mga cities or um, jurisdictions na outdoor lang grow nila, mas, mas ma actually, mas maganda yung quality, um, mas malalaki yung plants, mas matataba yung mga, uh, mga dahon niya. But um, I, I guess it depends on yung need ng, ng, ng sa pro uh, production or manufacturing. But I think it, it grows indoors and outdoors. Ba't ka pa umuwi dito? <laughs> ba't, ba't ka pa umuwi? Eh, samantang sa Amerika, napaka, 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 tala, napadali, napa, 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 di ba? Alam ko lang po ikwento, hindi ako marunong magtanim. Wala akong green thumb. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Ganun din. Lahat ng, <laughs> kahit na mga letus na mamatay sa akin eh. <laughs> My, my share ko lang ay kanina nabanggit ni uh, Edwin. 
uh, yung mga growing conditions. Apat ang common na growing uh, condition yan eh. Yung isa, yung wild lang, tumutubo lang sa bundok. I've been there, nakapunta na sa bundok, tumutubo lang siya talaga. Parang talahib lang, tabi-tabi lang. Bunutin, sunugin, nahulog ang buto, tutubo na naman ulit. Damo lang talaga siya. Hindi siya ganun ka-efficient kasi walang spacing eh. Siksikan sila, so medyo payat, matamlay ang kulay ng dahon, hindi masyado lumalaki. Pero tubo lang sila ng tubo in terms of uh, volume, napakarami nila. Isa naman yung outdoor farming. Ito yung naka-space out na. Either one meter apart, pero kung malaki ang variety nung tinatanim, two meters apart pa yan, isang dipa. Ang pagitan, ekta-ektarya, tapos may ilaw pa to extend the, the, uh, the amount of light or sunlight na nandun siya at certain periods of time uh, 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 ng growth nila, tapos naka-drip irrigation pa yan, pero outdoor. Meron din naman naka-greenhouse napapansin ko lang sa greenhouse, mas maliliit na konti yung variety. Meron naman indoor, totally indoor, pwede sa loob ng building. Yun ang pinakamahal na pagtanim niyan. May, yung moisture, humidity, temperature, uh, bina, binabantayan pa lahat siya. Eh. Kaya sa atin sa Philippines, yung outdoor, hindi yung wild, yung outdoor farming siya, greenhouse, might be very ideal sa atin dito sa Philippines. Alright, doon sa ating mga kasama sa media, Sir Mil, baka mayroon kang uh, katanungan at the same time. Yung Israel kasi is uh, already allowing the use of medical aspect of the cannabis. You know? Are they also utilizing yung mak makukuha sa fiber with you spouse? Uh, yung yung uh, stems nila. Well, uh, I've actually did uh, do some naka-research na rin ako konti tungkol sa ano yung ginagawa sa, sa Israel. And uh, yes, ang dami din nila na, na research. Uh, specifically what? Uh, I don't know off the top of my head. Pero knowing how they work, how they operate, lahat yan gagawin, papakinabangan nila yan. And uh, I'm sure I can find some research for you na They're, they're using it for all many, many different purposes. Merong nabanggit ko kanina, sorry, sisingit ako tukos sa Israel, ha? Nabanggit ko apat na growing conditions. May kalamang paraan na pag-produce ng cannabis ginagamit sa Israel. Hindi pa widespread, pero ginagamit nila to Using bioreactor, cloning. Sa loob ng makina, ilalagay doon ng source tissue, ilalagay doon, papadamihin, sa loob ng mga 14 to 21 days, ma-harvest na nila yon. Unlike sa atin, sa, sa wild, 14 weeks, 16 weeks sa uh, pag magtatanim tayo, sila tutubo yung tissue na lang mismo. Wala na ukat, wala ng tangkay, wala ng dahon. The cannabis itself inside bioreactors. Yush, dati, ginagamit ang mga bioreactors. Halimbawa, gagawa ako ng probiotics. Meron akong seed probiotic ilalagay ko sa isang bioreactor worth several millions and then isa cycle ko siya hanggang lalabas na mapuproduce ko na yung mga probiotics ko non-stop yan. Ginamit nila the same technology in Israel. Hindi, na, hindi lahat ng cannabis nila galing sa bioreactor. Pero it is a very efficient way of producing cannabis in Israel. Pang limang paraan, hindi ko na binanggit kanina. Yung sa inyo pong research, ano, ay uh, importante yung income potential no uh, sa, sa hemp at saka sa ano no meron ba meron na ba kayong nagawang sort of projection that will convince our uh, legislators na ito magiging income natin do you have uh, that one already prepared uh, meron po rin meron po rin actually uh, cannabis as as an industry as a whole is projected to be over uh, like a hundred 50 billion US dollars, 180. 180 billion US dollars by the year 2020, 2030. And uh, industrial hemp, kasama po doon, since kaya ng gumawa ng mga buildings, mga bahay, uh, and mga fabrics, and things of that nature, mga tulad ng mga damit na suot ko ngayon. Right, thank you, Mil. Meron pa tayong mga kasama dyan na gusto magtanong. Uh, question lang kay Ma'am Zara. Ano ba ang 
nakita niyo yung, yung uh, nagiging uh, balakit ngayon o sabi nga hadlang para patuloy nating maibukas yung isip dahil ikaw nag, nasa, naging cover ka rin sa media sa panahon natin may mga article 9265 kung ano-ano po mga laban sa drugs ano ba ang nakikita mong nagiging pinakamabigat na uh, sabi nga natin balakit ngayon dun, si, dito sa ating sinusulong na advocacy um, actually madami kasi <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean it's it's going to take a you know big effort talaga. Um, first of all, um, I'm gonna start with um, lack of information or lack of um, education on the part of our leaders. I will start there. Yeah, misinformation too. Because um, and it's one thing kung walang information available. There's research available from all over the world. It's a matter of you know, gamitin natin yung information that's available to us. You know, ibukas natin yung mga mata natin sa information na available naman. And then number two, yung stigma. You know, pag na-associate ka with someone or uh, something associated with cannabis, parang negative na yung, ano. like I was saying earlier, yung votes or yung support for decriminalization, may malaking stigma yun kasi, um, you know, if you are a, a legislator and you're associated with a bill na supposedly advocating for drug addicts, then yung guilt by association, that's very real in the Philippines. Parang if you're supporting uh, um, you know, drug addicts, you're also a drug addict yourself. So yun, it, it, that's another issue. And then number three, I guess it's the whole attitude, yung in denial and... and um, um, refusal to acknowledge that we are way behind other countries parang yung, and, and also yung attitude na you know just because you're in position you're in the position of authority ikaw na yung you know what what you believe in is you know the right thing but there are you know um, and again i call on um, you know to, to keep our uh, our minds open and be open to you know, alternative routes and more creative routes to, to get there, to, to legalization. So as the, uh, straight declarations, uh, should we decriminalize itong paggamit ng cannabis? Uh, well, the short answer is yes. But realistically, I mean, in this uh, day and age, I think uh, in the society that we live in and then in the, dito sa Pilipinas, uh, again, it's going to be, I mean, if legalization is a huge effort, etong decriminalization is a heavier lift. Um, um, yeah, yun nga, yung, yung guilt by association, that's, that's, that's very real. But we can take baby steps. Um, and one of the things that I think we should consider is maybe a you know baby steps nga. what if we can give cannabis uh, those people now convicted with cannabis crimes a resentencing hearing meaning you know we give them a second chance uh, appear before a different judge and then um, etong judge na to can take into consideration yung background nila first time offense ba nila or may violence pang involved dun sa arrest or gano ba kadami yung nahuli sa kanila baka naman personal quantity and they're just you know smoking a joint so I mean, well, to uh, to them it's a big it's a big deal. But you know, do they really belong in prison with mga hardcore um, drug offenders like people who um, use opioids and heroins? Do they mag dapat ba talaga magkasama sila sa kulungan? Parang hindi naman yata. Actually, naging mukang napakinggan din tayo ng Department of Justice sa late uh, lately. Yung isa sa mga campaign ngayon ng Department of Justice sa pangunguna ni Secretary Boeing Remulia is to take on guest yung ating mga city girls, yung mga less crimes like nitong mga na-involved sa marijuana taking o paggamit ng marijuana, mukhang binababa na nila yung kaso. Yun ang maganda, yung development. Yeah, napakagandang balita nun kung mai... Kung mag... Kung mag ang tawag? Mai... Sa, sa, basa, sa batas... Yeah, I mean that, that, that's great news. Cos Richard, yung ating ano, yung ating kapabilidad dito sa development sapagkat uh, ikaw as a scientist inventor, uh, maraming mga complexities na binabanggit dito sa paggawa nito. Pinpointed na ba ng inyong laboratory kung ano yung pwede nating uh, mapakinabangan at magamit para sa kapakanan ng ating mga nangangailangan ng gamot na ito manggagaling sa marijuana? 
First of all, meron tayong plantation. Ginagamit para sa mga medicinal plants. What will it take to convert, assuming approved na ng batas natin, what will it take to, uh, to convert ang ating plantation na ngayon ay may mga halamang gamot into cannabis plantation? Very easy. Walang major changes. Nandun na yung plantation natin. Second, meron tayong processing facility within the plantation. What will it take to convert it? Very easy. Ang kailangan lang natin, approval lang. Third, meron tayong manufacturing facility approved by FDA to manufacture uh, pharmaceutical drugs, food, or even cosmetics. What will it take to manufacture cannabis na nakakapsul or naka-oil within our facility? Very easy. Kung baga, sige, bukas gawin natin. Parang ganun lang. Now, we have to do testing. Yung uh, microbiotesting uh, for yeast, mold, E. coli, salmonella, for all plants including cannabis. Can we do that in Bowertech? Yes. Can we test for heavy metal and other contaminants? Yes. Can we test the purity of each individual substance? How much CBD, CB, CBG or THC inside the material? Yes. When can we do that? Anytime. Do we have the capability? Yes. Marami ng government officials ang nagpunta sa power tech. Marami mang babatas, lalo na yung may kinalaman sa proposal whether to approve or not ang cannabis. At namangha sila na oo nga, totoo pa lang sinasabi. May capability ang Pilipinas na gumawa ng gamot mula sa cannabis. Pangalawa, uh, marami rin bukod sa mga babatas, mga government agencies, Department of Science and Technology, ang dalawa na ating uh, secretary na nakapunta roon, mga USEC, pati sa Department of Agriculture has been there. Department of Environment and Natural Resources have been there. They are all convinced na locally, in the Philippines, kaya natin gumawa ng gamot mula sa cannabis. Okay. Mike, uh, laki. Gano'n kayo kalapit kay Bongbong? Matal, wala pa. <laughs> Hindi, siguro. Ito, uh, siguro yung ginagawa nga nating advocacy na ito na pagsagamit ng social medium, ng mainstream media, eh, imposibleng hindi nakakarating yan sa Pangulo. Sa NIW, nagdarating yan ito si Bumbulo na eh. Yes. Yes, oh, siya invited na opening. Oh, kasama, may exhibit ka doon. <laughs> sa NIW, National Inventors Week. And yung second day noon will be Cannabis Congress. So the whole day, we'll have speakers about cannabis. So, andun yung mga ilang babatas din. Uh, imbitahin din natin. Bilis ng oras, oh. I still have 12 minutes bago tayo magtapos. But anyway, bago... Isisingit ko lang. Uh -oh. Alam niyo kung paano nire-respeto ang kakayanan ng Pilipinas. Nabanggit ko nga kanina ang Indian Ayush Ministry. Dalawa ang Ministry of Health nila. Isang conventional at saka isang traditional. Ayush Ministry is the traditional health ministry ng India. They will fly all the way just to visit Bowertech. And after Bowertech, they will go to the Department of Health. Nakakatuwa. Alam niyo kung bakit? Our Department of Health has never been to Bauer Tech. Nakatuwa ba yun o ironically? But anyway, itong si Sir Edison, nabasa ko rin dito as a co-founder of Sensible Philippines. Could you kindly give us ano ba yung particular na a hint lang ng Sensible Philippines na grupo ninyo? About it. Okay. It's... Mostly about the the education, the re-education, and the promoting of uh, cannabis use. Because uh, as was mentioned na earlier, there are uh, misinformation jan and outdated information tungkol sa cannabis. So the organization we strive to just educate uh, as many people as we can, uh, para to keep the conversation going, para maintindihan natin ano ba talaga na Especially uh, outside the Philippines, because uh, I hate to say this, pero napag-iwan na tayo talaga sa mga nanyanyare uh, all over the world. So should I say, Ma'am Sara, as ng sa other guest natin, ang problema natin dito yung astigma dito sa ating sinusulong na do kasi. Yeah, malaking, uh, it's a big factor, yung stigma. You know, anytime, and you know, informally, I ask people, pag, you, you know, uh, pag nalaman nila that I work in the cannabis space, 
Um, so, <laughs> tatanong ko sila if they support uh, legalization. So, pag narinig nila yung term na medical, they're all for it. Parang, okay, sige, everybody knows someone who knows someone who's been, you know, helped by cannabis. Gumamit ng cannabis na improve yung medical condition nila. But if, uh, in the back of there, I mean, tanggalin mo yung word na medical and automatically, parang, oh, drugs to. Diba? Parang biglang, it's the same plant. It's the same plant that you use para mag-treat sa'yo ng medical condition mo. It's the same plant that you use recreationally. But uh, it's night and day. Hindi, we're not there yet. And, and that's our uh, goal, to get there, to raise awareness, to, you know, this is just a plant. It's not a Frankenstein creature created in a lab na dapat katakutan. So, yun ang uh, goal natin, raise awareness, continue to educate the public, and you are a critical component in that goal. Uh, Keep it in the news. Pag-usapan natin lagi. Habang pinag-uusapan natin to, nagiging normal na topic to. Para hindi na, hindi na siya tabu. Hindi na anytime marinig nila cannabis, naisip nila agad, oh, drugs to. That is from a journalistic point of view. Kapagkat sa, uh, for all you know, si Ma'am Sara is a uh, former journalist kasakasama natin dito sa media. Sir Richard, so ito mga bagay na ito na kinakarap natin challenges ngayon. So far, uh, kahit sa ang makarating ay maiparliliwanag mo yung kakayahan ng Pilipino. Uh, ikaw ang pangunahin dyan sapagkat ikaw nga ang nagsusunod nito. Kaya na natin natin? Kaya ng Pilipino. Kaya natin ito. Sa mga hindi naniniwala, tawagan nyo ako. Ito cellphone number ko. Bibigay ko. <laughs> Lakay, baka may mga karagdagan nga pang katanungan. Lakay, ikaw ay uh, once upon a time, Lakay, nakagamit ka ba ng marijuana? <laughs> hindi pa. <laughs> <laughs> Sa edad mo na yan? Sorry. No. Ha? Sorry. Ha? Sorry. Oh, hindi sorry. pa. Oh. Hindi pa. Pero langis gagamitin mo. Alam mo ba pwedeng ga gawing langis daw yung marijuana sabi ni Boss Richard? Uh, uh, Ako tawag Baguio pero ni oh, ni, ni Insan. Uh, hindi pa ako natikim yan. Pero sa Baguio nakita mo normal Dali. normal na tinatanim yan. Hmm. Dali. Uh. Ikikwento ko lang ha sandali ha. Nakatila ko. Tama ba puno ng mangga yan? Yeah. Yung malaki na yan? Oh. Oh. Lahat ng bagay kapag sinobrahan makakasama. Uh, manggang yan, pag nagbunga yan na isang kaeng, kinain mo, hindi ka makakapasok sa trabaho mga isang linggo. Di ba? O ganun din. Meron kang CKD o nagdadialysis ka. Huwag kang kakain ng malunggay. Bawal sa yan. Huwag kang kakain ng saging. Bawal sa iyo yan. So, lahat ng bagay na sobra ay masama. Ang cannabis, gamot yan. Pag sinobrahan mo, masama din yan. Katulad ng mangga na yan. Katulad ng saging, katulad ng malunggay. Lahat ng sobra, masama. Ang pag-ibig lang ang hindi. Ikaw. Ah. <laughs> um, Pakilala po tayo. Nolan Ariola, Radio Veritas, uh, Leader News Philippines. Uh, Sir Edison, ano po yung pagkakaiba ng hemp sa marijuana? Yung hemp po. Hemp, oh, hemp po sa marijuana. marijuana. Oh, okay. Bale, yung uh, yun na-mention ko earlier, yung marijuana, nickname lang siya actually. So, yun yung pinaka-essence ng yung word na marijuana to begin with. Yung hemp naman, tsaka sa cannabis, hemp siya yung ano, cannabis na, na plant, na var variation na ano, konti lang yung THC. Yung 0.3 or below. Uh, the best uh, visual siguro I mean it's it, it, hindi magan I mean, this is not a perfect comparison pero parang meron tayong yung yung pakwan natin na may boto and meron din tayong pakwan na wala di ba so yung yung hemp parang siya yung yung walang boto but it's it hindi hindi magandang comparison yun pero at least there's a, may may visual tayo na parang yun yung pinagkaiba sa kanila Ito, uh, in acknowledge din natin, we'd like to acknowledge yung ating mga viewers and uh, listeners uh, dito sa ating social media page. Hindi uh, man natin mabanggit, ang dami nilang mga nag-text uh, dito. Isa lang doon sa nakita natin, uh, si Yoni Ju ay watching from Valenzuela City. I have a friend from California and she tell me more about the cannabis and how to help those person 
yung epileptic problem. So please support Medical Cannabis here in the Philippines. So marami tayong mga support. Salamat po doon sa mga nanonood sa atin ngayon at the same time. Si Eliza o Elisa uh, Galban ay uh, meron din. Grabe, ang laki po pala ng pwedeng uh, maitulong ng, uh, sa atin ng cannabis. Hindi lang gamot, ang daming pwedeng gawin sa cannabis makatutulong sa ating industry. Uh, si Francis Salas ay uh, meron din. Yes, dapat maging bukas na ang isipan ng bawat isa, lalo na sa ating bansa sa paggamit ng medical cannabis. Marami ang matutulungan, lalo na sa mga may karamdaman. Ito po yung mga live na pumapasok ngayon dito sa ating live Facebook page na hindi po namin gawa-gawa yan. Yan ay galing mismo sa ating mga viewers at ilang mga bukas ang isipan supporting this advocacy na mabuksan ang legalization sa paggamit po ng cannabis. Sir, nasa huling bahagi na tayo. So, Maraming salamat sa lahat ng sumusabaybay sa Media Health Forum, sa lahat ng advocates ng cannabis. Naniniwala po ako na maraming matutulungan nito Medically, ang daming gagaling dito. Economically, sa buong Pilipinas, bilyong-bilyon ang papasok na buwis. Trabaho may bibigay natin sa sambayanan natin. Nagpapasalamat ako kay Mizara, kay Mr. Edison, sa kanilang advokasya. They are experts on this field. Ms. Sara, siya ang nanguna sa cannabis uh, program sa Sacramento, na unang-una naman sa California. At si Mr. Edison ay uh, matagal na niyang pinag-aralan ng uh, industrialized uh, hemp. Pag dumating ang panahon, Magandang negosyo yan, magan, maraming tao ang matutulungan niyan sa Pilipinas. May bago na palang grupo ngayon, ang tawag nila, Canaol. <laughs> diba, no, nakita mo? Diba tama, nauso yung uh, kasabihan na Sanaol, eto naman, Canaol. Pero mayroon isang reaction si Nida Autential. Good morning po sa lahat. Nawa ibigay po sa atin at basbasan ng pamahalan upang magamit na sa kagalingan ng maraming may karamdaman ng cannabis. Malaking uh, tulong po ito sa science at maraming may karamdaman ang mapapagaling. Hinihiling po namin na sana ipatlubayan po ito at uh, patlubayan do tayo ng divine interventions. Uh, Alright, so with that, uh, si Ma'am Sara, parting uh, message natin. Uh, thank you ulit for having me back. Um, like you said, no, six years ko nang kinakarear to. I have a lot of information to share. A lot of, you know, yung knowledge na lahat natutunan ko in California. And um, experience working with patients, working with uh, legislators, working with uh, the industry. Um, yeah, marami akong may tutulong. Kung, uh, kung um, you know, with, with, uh, with legislation, with uh, advocacy, with raising awareness. So, yeah, happy to be back here. And anytime you need me again, I'll be here. So, po, babalikan na po yata sa Australia. Ano? Ano? Australia, California. Sacramento, California pala. No, I'll be back. <laughs> Sir Edison, pleasure to have you. Ano po ang ating uh, masasabi at the same time, parting message po natin. Okay, thank you po. Uh, so, my parting message is, uh, first of all, everybody, uh, happy Independence Day. And, I uh, know, may... So, uh, Oh, happy Independence Day. So maybe may we all be free sa mga outdated laws and outdated mindsets and uh, sa mga tamad mag-isip because talagang uh, this is uh, is a wonderful thing and I'd like to share that we have a Philippine flag uh, made from hemp fabric. Sa mga friends namin nakagawa po sila and they just uh, everybody hope everybody has a, a wonderful. Uh, Independence Day uh, ahead. Maraming salamat mo. Yung bang sinabi niyong mga tamad mag-isip ay address doon sa mga legislator. Ang dami-dami nila doon. <laughs> anyway. Uh, bahala na kung sino. Ano, ba bahala na sila mag-observe. <laughs> so, another, uh, sabi nga, another uh, editions ng ating po na mga uh, program. Lakay, magpapaalam lang tayo. Ano, magkagamit yan ang mic. Ayan. Thank you for uh, another uh, Monday again for uh, our advocacy, uh, my Juana. Si Lakay po ay isa sa aming mga sabi nga uh, dean of broadcast na siya na lang talagang remaining among his batch. But with that, mga kaibigan, kami po ay nagpapasalamat again. Hopefully, see you on next Monday para sa panal panibagong presentations ng ating Media Health Forum dito po naman sa Quezon City. Sa ngala ng Bauer Tech Corporation, Boss Richard Nixon Gomez, Ako po si Edwin Yosebio. Maraming salamat. Magandang amaga.